Hey everybody, so uh, today I'm going to be doing my rear brake pads and rotors. When I was driving, I was able to hear a, a, a high-pitched squeal, which is usually an indicator that it's time to replace your brake pads, and I was also getting some vibration when I applied the brakes, which is also an indicator that it's time to replace the rotors. If you've been following my videos, you know that I've got a 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokee that I just recently bought about a year ago. Don't know what kind of maintenance the previous owner did, so I usually like to do all the work myself. One, and because it's cheaper, and two, because that way I can just replace everything, clean everything up, make sure that the car is being taken care of. So, what are you going to need for this job? I've got an impact wrench over here as well as jack and jack stands to get the wheels off. You're going to need a 7 millimeter uh, hex uh, bolt in order to get the... Um, bolts off of the caliper and I've got my socket wrench here. I've got my torque wrench. It's 20 foot pounds for the caliper bolts. You're also going to need an 18 millimeter socket to get the hex bolts off. This little doohickey here is just a sharp piece. You're just going to need something sharp. There's a gasket around uh, the rotor, which you got to get off. If you watch my previous video over here where I took off the front ones, you'll see that I actually accidentally ripped the front one to so be very careful. Luckily, Baxter was able to have one, so I was able to replace it. I've got some pliers and a screwdriver. They're going to help me get the rattle clip off. Got a wire brush to clean things up. Got my brake clean over here, so for uh, cleaning everything up. Got a C-clamp in order to compress down the piston so that I can get the new brake pads in. And then I've got my power stop rotors and brake pads. I've got an unboxing video over here in case you want to see actually more about this particular kit. So first step is I'm going to take the uh, wheel off, the one I got the wheel off. I'll start to show you the procedure for taking the calipers off so you can get the brake pads off and get the rotor off. All right, got the wheel off. First step is that you've got the caliper bolts has got a little plastic cover on the back here. So you're going to want to take a screwdriver and get in there and take that off so that you can get your socket wrench in there. These little covers. There's one here and there's one below. I'll give you another shot so you can see that one and then you can get your uh, seven millimeter socket in there. So here's the second one right here. Just like the top one, you're gonna wanna get a screwdriver in there and just pry that little cover off and then set them aside. And as you can see inside of there is the actual bolt that you're gonna wanna be able to get into. Now one thing that I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to put a jack underneath the uh, A-arm here and raise it up so that I can actually get a socket in there to take this bolt off. So as you can see, it's a pretty tight fit. You may not need to do this. This uh, could just be because of the particular socket um, and seven millimeter hex bolt that I've got here. Um, but I actually had to jack, the, jack it up compress the shocks to make enough room for me in order to get a socket wrench in there. So I'm going to break this free, start to remove this bolt, and then I'll start working on the top bolt. Alright, I got the bottom bolt out, and I'm going to take the top bolt out. This one is a lot easier because the arms aren't in the way. get my trusty screwdriver kind of push that out and there you have it I got the two bolts out in the back the only thing really holding this on is still this rattle clip so in order to get this rattle clip off what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screwdriver wedge it on here which is going to move this little part up enough to pop it out and then as this pops out, this whole thing is going to come off. So with one hand, you're going to want to hold this. With the other hand, you're going to want to go ahead and pry this out. It'll get this out, pop off. You might want to keep this rattle clamp. Um, the power stops come with a replacement rattle clamp, so I'm going to toss mine. Uh, but just make sure that you're holding on to this. And then once it comes off, you're going to see me just set it up here. Some people will use a bungee cord or a piece of string or something to tie it to make sure that it doesn't accidentally fall off. Um, I've done this enough times. I haven't dropped one yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and set it up there. And there we go. I got it off. A little shimmying, a little elbow grease. was able to get that off. Here's uh, my old brake pad. 
take it off. You can see how worn down that is. Definitely time to replace it. You can also see that there's uh, a groove inside of the rotor, so it's also a good idea that I replace these rotors. Next, there's two bolts in the back um, that you're going to use your 18 millimeter socket to break free. You're also going to need a breaker bar in order to get those free because they're kind of tight. So here's one of the bolts that you're going to need to get loose. Here's the second bolt that you're going to need to get loose. Once you got both of these off, the caliper holders will come off. Um, I'm actually using my torque wrench as a breaker bar, which is never a good idea. Uh, but I don't have a breaker bar handy, so I'm going to use what I got. These ones in the rear are definitely a lot easier than the ones in the front, but considering they're only 20 foot pounds versus 40 foot pounds, that makes a lot of sense. And so now I just got to go ahead and get this off. I think I got it about finger loose. Nope, not quite yet. So I'll just go ahead and keep loosening this off until I can get that bolt out. And then I'll be able to get it off. Okay, I think that's about finger loose. I'm going to be able to go ahead and loosen it the rest of the way up. I'm not going to take it all the way off. I'm just going to get it almost all the way off. And then go ahead and break the top one free and getting it loose. Alright. Uh, as you can see, I took the bottom bolt out. Got the top bolt nice and loose. So it's right at this point, it's really easy to get it off. I'm gonna stop there because if I go all the way, I'm gonna drop this on the floor because I'm doing this one handed. Okay, now I got the calipers fully out of the way in order to get the rotor off. I gotta take this little uh, gasket off of the rotor and I'm gonna take my little pokey thing, get it in there. Again, be very careful that you don't break it like I did last time. And then go ahead and pop it off. And I did a little magic of editing because I needed two hands in order to do that. And ladies and gentlemen, I am actually extremely tired today. Oh, see, look at that. I just dropped my screwdriver. I'm dropping everything. But here's that little gasket clean it up you're going to need to reuse this but you get this off and now you'll be able to get the rotor off um, so far I've been able to really just pull these off with my hands and so I'm gonna... yeah quick sidebar now I'm gonna compress the piston so I can make room for the new brake pads but make sure you take the cap off of your uh, brake fluid reservoir so that way when the fluid backs up in here um, it's got some place to go and the air can come out the fluid can take its place So now I'm gonna use my c-clamp to compress the piston So as you can see I use my c-clamp here to go ahead and fully compress the piston As you can see it's fully compressed there um, and that will leave me enough room to put in my new brake pads um, I've taken my wire brush and some of my brake clean and done as good of a job as I can of cleaning that up before I put my new rotor on. So I'm also going to use the brake clean to clean some of the oil that they put on the factory off of the rotor before I put it on and I'm actually going to go take the wire brush and some of the brake clean to the calipers, clean those up for a little bit and then reassemble this whole thing. So here's my caliper. I'm going to show you it, what it looks like beforehand. You can see there's some brown grime in there. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. And once I've got it all cleaned up, it's going to be time to start putting on the new brake pads. And there we go. After about 10 minutes of scraping and spraying, uh, this is my caliper all cleaned up. Um, I don't really see a huge difference, but... Hey, can't hurt. There we go. I got the new rotor on. Um, I actually found a really interesting uh, video up there that it's going to explain the slotted and grooved design of these rotors. Um, the net net is that really these don't do anything, but I like the way they look. Um, and that's what he said ultimately is that's really all it's for is for the looks. They do give some performance benefit, the slots here, the drills, 
um, are for old asbestos type brake pads, which we don't use anymore. These are going to be ceramics. Um, so I kind of fell for the marketing, but it's really just about the looks. So next thing is I got to put this gasket back on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on and then we're going to be putting the calipers back on. So I'm going to tighten these up as much as I can with my hands. Then I'm going to get the torque wrench out, torque it down to 20 foot pounds of pressure, and then get the brake pads in there. So I'll go ahead and tighten these up. Now I got the caliper holders on. And let's get the torque wrench. Okay, got the gasket back on, got the calipers on, got them finger tight. All right, so I got the caliper and the caliper holders back on. I got the bolts back inside of the rubber bushings here. I got brand new rubber bushings that came with the power stop uh, rotor and brake kits. And then I've got the upper one, got the bolt back in, the new rubber bushing on here as well. I'm going to put the caps back on and then I'm going to put the new rattle clip back on to this. That'll tighten everything down and then I'll put the wheel on and then be able to do the break-in procedure for these uh, new rotors and brake pads and then I should be done. Okay, I got the rattle clip on and the easiest way that I find to get this rattle clip back on is to go ahead and put this on the outside, get this side hooked in and then it'll kind of be sticking out this way and then use my screwdriver to wedge it in here and basically pry it till I get this side down and then this little piece will be sticking out and then you just push it in and that thing is rock solid. So there we go. That is how you change out the rotors and brakes on the rear of a 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Put the tire on. I'm going to do the break-in procedure. And again, if you want to know more about this particular rotor brake pad combo, I'll put another link to the video here. I've got all the materials that you're going to need down below with links to where you can buy it as well. Please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and if you got any questions, any comments, any things you think I could be doing different or better, please let me know. And thanks again.